I've always liked to shop, not at the mall, shop for treaty benefits. You could set up great international structures that could drastically reduce your withholding taxes on just about anything. The best things were interest, dividends, and royalties. With the right structure and the right treaties, you could get to zero. This sort of treaty shopping isn't illegal or even unusual, but the IRS hates it, even if it doesn't involve U.S. taxes. Congress enacted several things to reduce treaty shopping in cases that do involve U.S. tax. There are limits in the branch profits tax to make sure it's paid by foreign corporations owned by non-treaty country shareholders. For outbound payments, there are the conduit financing rules under Section 7701L. There are also some cases and rulings that treat back-to-back -back loan arrangements as shams to be disregarded. All treaties adopted in the last 20 years have a provision that prevents or limits treaty shopping. It cuts both ways, though, and sometimes it has odd side effects. These limitation of benefits articles, as they're called, put some significant limits on the definition of resident under the treaty. They usually don't have much effect on individuals or on corporations owned by individuals resident in one of the treaty countries. They don't have much effect on treaty country corporations owned by treaty country public companies. There's not much treaty shopping going on there. The limitation on benefits articles do have a major impact on other corporations, though. Here's an example structure hit squarely by most LOB articles. An Oman individual owns a Swiss corporation, which owns a U.S. subsidiary. Payments by the U.S. sub to the Swiss corporation don't qualify for any reduction of withholding tax under the Swiss treaty. There are two key aspects of most of the LOB articles. First is the ownership test. The particular corporation must be ultimately owned by residents of one or the other treaty country. Our treaties with European Union countries include all of the EU countries as the same treaty country for the limitation on benefits articles. So long as there's no reduction in tax as a result of differences in the two treaties. Thus, a payment to a Dutch corporation owned by a German individual qualifies for zero withholding on interest since each of the Dutch and German treaties provide for zero withholding. The second aspect of LOB qualification is what's called a base erosion test. It requires that less than a certain part, usually 50%, of the gross income of the payee can be used to pay interest or royalties to non-qualifying persons. These LOB clauses are really difficult to understand. You must read them very carefully and usually more than once. Always read the treaty. Often you also have to read a supplement to the treaty called a Memorandum of Understanding, which is just as binding as the treaty. There's often an amendment to the treaty called a protocol, and it often helps to read Treasury's explanation of the treaty to the Senate for the ratification process. But remember, Treasury's explanation isn't binding on the other country. Finding information on U.S. treaties is real easy. The IRS webpage with links to links on treaties, protocols, and memorandums of understanding. Finding other treaties and cases and rulings can be like searching for a needle in a haystack. So other sources shown here can be useful. The IBFD 
treaties database is expensive, but it comes in cheaper regional editions, and it contains all the world's treaties. There are over a thousand. If a treaty reduces your U.S. tax on anything but an item shown on Form 1042, and you're a non-resident, you have to file a tax return and report the treaty-based return position on Form 8833. A treaty-based return position is anything about a treaty that in any way reduces your U.S. tax. If you're a resident or citizen and have a treaty-based return position, you must file a return and include Form 8833, even if you're not otherwise required to file. If you're a non-resident, non-citizen and have only income reportable and reported on Form 1042-S and you don't owe any additional tax or are not entitled to a refund, you don't have to file a U.S. return or report anything on Form 8833. Everybody else with a treaty-based return position has to file a return and file Form 8833. Here's an example. Klaus, a German resident, owns Klausschaft GmbH, a German corporation. It owns Delco a Delaware corporation with offices in Newark. That's Newark, New Jersey, not Newark, Delaware. Klaus Schaft sells goods to Delco, which resells them to customers in the U.S. Hans, Klaus Schaft's sales VP, regularly visits the Newark office, working from a conference room, and talks about sales with Delco's purchaser. That's doing business and a potential exposure to US, U.S. tax. But since Hans works from the conference room and doesn't have an assigned office, and Delco is not Klaus Schaff's agent, Klaus Schaff doesn't have a PE, and it won't have U.S. tax under the German treaty. Klaus Schaff should file a U.S. tax return with Form 8833 and very little else, to claim the treaty-based return position. What if Klaus Schaff doesn't file until the IRS comes calling? Will it lose its deductions? Will it lose its treaty-based return position? There's a case that says they're okay and can file a return late, as long as it arrives before the case goes to court. So, Here's the quiz. Send me an email with a citation to that case. There's also a penalty for not reporting treaty-based return positions. The penalty is $10,000 for corporations and $1,000 for individuals. It applies to each failure. These amounts are the end of the world, but they do hurt. However, there's another scarier provision. You can potentially lose deductions if the return isn't filed. The case I had you look up, though, says you get the deductions, even if the return's late. So get that tax return in before you go to court. The U.S. also has several other types of treaties. The one you're most likely to encounter in the corporate context is a social security or totalization agreement. These are nifty little easy to understand treaties. They limit collection of social security tax to one country and coordinate retirement benefits. There's a lot more consistency among these treaties, but still there are some key differences. Always read the treaty. I'm omitting state income taxes here, not because they're not part of the course. I'm omitting them because our treaties don't directly address them. There are some indirect effects for non-residents, though. 
in some states that start with federal taxable income. But that's a different course. That's the end of our treaty coverage. I hope you found this useful, and thanks for learning with me. Thank you.